If you've ever printed a temp tower and wondered what the actual heck am I looking at and what is the right one to go with? Well, you found the right video. This is Print Fix Friday, episode 115. We're going to dig into a temp tower and talk all about it, why they matter, and why they're useful. Let's get into it. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And hey, if you're new here and you're dealing with 3D printer problems, we are here to help. But hey, if you don't mind, leave a like and get subscribed. Helps the channel grow and cost you nothing. If you are dealing with print problems, feel free to reach out to us on any of the social media platforms. Or of course, you can email us directly, youtube at 3dmusketeers.com, where we can help you get back to printing with purpose. It is not often that I see a post on Reddit that fundamentally looks like the photos were taken by a professional photographer or someone that at least understands how legitimate photos need to be taken. And because of that, and because we get asked this question a lot, and it is a temp tower, let's talk all about the temp tower and why you might want to do it for at least every type of material that you have, but potentially every color and certainly every manufacturer a filament that you have. What exactly is a temp tower? Well, a temp tower is a tower that looks very similar to what you see here that is printed in successive temperature levels. Now you can either go hot to cold or cold to hot. These are actually done in most slicers, uh, Bamboo Studio, Orca Slicer, Super Slicer. That is where you can find these completely pre-done for you and you just give it the temperatures that you're looking to use. Otherwise, you have to download the STL file and then kind of build it yourself in a program like Prusa Slicer. I'm sure they're working on calibrations to be built into the slicer itself. And because competition have done it, it would be a relatively easy thing for them to port in because open source for the win. But the idea of a temperature tower is for you to determine what the perfect operating temperature of your material is. Because quite honestly, the temperature will change not just for the material. We know it changes for the material, but it will also change for the color. Certain colors have different levels of heat that it takes to get them to temperature. Black being the hardest and white generally being the second hardest because of all the titanium dioxide that's in it. But regular colors, you know, like your grays and your blues, they might be relatively close to each other. We generally say if you're going to run a black filament and you're running it fast, give it five extra degrees. It might string a little bit, but that's what a blowtorch is for. Looking at a temp tower here, the one that we can see on the screen goes from 235 to 195. And this is all done in PLA+. We can see they chose to go from hot to cold, which is actually my preference, but you do want to make sure that if it wasn't generated by the slicer, that those temperatures are accurate. Because oddly, we see it start to string more toward the top where it's colder, and normally stringing occurs when it is hotter. But hey, each material is a little bit different. The value in this is it will let you know kind of the lowest temperature that you can run your filament. We can see here it starts to look the best around 220, but then we also want to look at the overhangs and we want to look at the backside here to see how overhangs on both sides are doing. A lot of printers only have cooling from one direction. That means that you have to check on multiple angles to see how it looks. From my perspective, eh, the 220 still looks pretty good. Yeah, really the overhang is pretty consistent. 200 looks like crap. A little bit of stringing there. 205 is good and 210 down those look pretty consistent. On the back side, we can see gorgeous high resolution photos here. Really anything from actually 230 right there. There's a less of a bump down here than there is here from my perspective, but there can be very, you know, minute things that work into the problems. Other thing you want to look for is the bridging. We can see here on the 220 that we have a bridge that didn't connect. So we might say that's bridging over troubled filament. I will lay But on the 225, and particularly the 230, it starts to look much better. Looking at the front side, we can see that, yeah, got a lot more sagging on the 220. 225 is a little bit tighter. The 230 is tighter. 235 does seem to be the best bridging, but you have to play and see, is that what you really want to look for? The 235 actually looks pretty good. Minimal stringing, but I might say that the 220 is passable. Quite frankly, anything from 215 down 
seems reasonably passable. And that's the thing with temp towers. You're gonna find that there's a pretty decent range at which your filament will operate. For most PLA, it's anywhere between 200 and 220 C. And for certain materials, you might need more temperature. But remember, if you want to run high speeds, let's say you're using a bamboo or one of the new Chidi Tech burners. We have an X plus three. I absolutely love it. It's it's back there whirring away. Uh, we did an unboxing of it recently. We'll card to it so you guys can take a look. And of course, the brand new Prusa XL, another printer that comes with input shaper, although it's in beta currently. I don't want to get into that right now. But input shaper printers, ones that run faster than your average everyday 3D printer, those need more temperature. So if you're running a regular PLA at 215, like I was right here, you might end up with filament that gets so cold, it doesn't actually stick to the layer below it, giving you really, really weak layers. So turn up the temp. This was printed at 215, but it's like 250 millimeters a second for the perimeters. So just upped it to 225. She seems to be running really well, but that's part of the deal. Could I go through and actually build out a temp tower? I could, but eh, I just like to send it sometimes and I forgot to update a setting from earlier. On this piece, I would say 215 and down look acceptable. 225 and down look phenomenal. And that's the value of a temp tower because you might think, oh, it's PLA plus. It just runs at PLA temps. And well, yeah, if you run PLA at like a 215 range, you might be okay. The more heat you put into a filament, the stronger that material will become to a certain point where it does start to degrade. And yes, if you do add more heat, sometimes that does cause more stringing. So that is something to be aware of as well. As they're seeing it, the 235 seems to be the best results. They're going down five degrees at a time, trying to get good results currently at 205. Is this test reliable? That is really the hardest question to answer here. Because if you're running a printer with input shaper, it's likely not gonna get up to speed here. You're not gonna really start flowing filament very quickly. And you can actually check this inside of the slicer itself. If we look inside Prusa Slicer here, part that I was gonna be playing around with five colors, when we have it sliced, you can see that even though we have five colors, our waste is well, not even 10% of the cost of the entire part. So gotta love that. But instead of looking at the per tool, we can look at volumetric flow rate. And that will give us a better idea of what we're looking at for speeds. Because we have the XL running a little bit slower, I'm still trying to push the boundaries of it and I haven't really tuned this profile yet too much, you can see that we're maxing out around the 13 to 16 range. And that's pretty decent for a stock hot end that is running relatively standard temperatures. If you wanted to print faster, you need to put more heat into that filament to do it. Temp towers like this are not always the right thing to do. What we often say is get a good test print. If that's the Benchy, it's the Benchy. And hey, coming soon, we're gonna have the Victoria test model, which we're gonna call Lazumi. And if you guys wanna see that, let me know, cause we are in the final stages of getting this thing ready to go. It does take a while to print, but it does test quite a few things on your machine, including dimensional accuracy, bridging, support material. If you wanted to have it, it is not necessary. And uh, it's Victoria. How can you not love it? But even that is not gonna let a printer get up to crazy speeds. And so, you might need to look at something like a 40 millimeter calibration cube, something that will let a printer go much faster and really kind of see, does it feel like crap? But as you can see here, the temperature, while it does have some variance, it starts to look good as early as 215 and it starts to look pretty darn good down at 235. There's some great advice here saying, go with the smoothest appearance easiest to read numbers and least stringing and has the best overhang. You may have to accept an issue or two, but I'd opt for the best appearance and overhang despite the stringing. And I totally agree. A blowtorch, or if you wanted to, a filament dryer will often take care of very minor stringing where you might have some moisture in the filament, but it's not wet filament. And quite frankly, if you took some time and tuned in your retraction settings, you could probably get rid of that stringing as well. As you can see here, printing slower might help too. 
if you're speed printing. And speed is really where this style of temp tower does have to get thrown out because the machine is never going to hit its max speed. Now, it's good for testing bridging. Great bridging test. And we can see that, yeah, at the 205, that's really bad. It gets bad again at the 215. 220 is okay. 225 starts to be good. Bridging is really something that's important because if you can't get good clean bridges then ultimately you're not going to get great parts and you're going to have to rely on support material more often which is a waste of material a waste of time and adds a layer of problems to the build so do we recommend these temperature towers absolutely if you are trying a new brand of filament it is great to run a temp tower we not only would recommend running a temp tower but then also running some sort of a filament swatch. Uh, the Zombie Hedgehog Swatch Truck is one of my favorites, although there are plenty of filament swatches out there that will let you have kind of a list of colors that you have. Now, if you're running an operation like we have, um, you can't really do that because we have over a hundred open spools of filament. Pretty much every one of them is different. It's too much to keep track of for me. But if you're have maybe five or six spools of filament it's good to keep that either right on the back of the sharpie or design it into the swatch itself what the material is what temperature it was printed at what speed it was printed at and what printer you might not think that having the printer on your filament swatches is important until you start getting newer printers the ones that could go faster maybe you start building something like a voron yes there is a trident coming soon tm don't worry, it's happening, I promise, soon TM. But as you change and your printers change, you might start getting into speed printing, where that old color swatch that is printed at a colder temperature would not survive at these higher speeds. So you have to rerun everything and say, this is at 215 on an Ender 3, this is at 230 on a Prusa XL, or a Bamboo, or a Voron. And they look the same. But knowing that you have different properties for different materials is incredibly important. Now, is this my favorite type of temp tower? It is. We love this style. And while, yeah, it's not great if you're dealing with a high-speed printer, it tests so many things, including having a beveled edge here that lets you test longer and longer bridges, starting with a shorter one and moving up to a large one. We have a cone here that tests for stringing as well as small part quality, and we have this really odd kind of oval light bulb style shape that lets you check for overhangs on one side and on the other side, we have another overhang checker as well. And because it not only stacks it, it lists the numbers. It gives you an amazing opportunity to just be able to glance at something and say, yeah, this looks pretty darn good. I would love to know your guys' thoughts on temperature towers in those comments below. It's not often we get really good photos, so I wanted to do a specific episode on temperature towers because I think that they're so incredibly important, especially when you're just starting. When you get a little bit of uh, experience in you or, you know, a little bit of rust on the steel, if you will, you kind of can look at a material, know its base filament properties, and know that's going to be in this rough range. And if you need to adjust it, you just adjust it on the fly, pretty much. And if you're like me and you forget to do that, you have a small print failure, you know it's temperature related, you crank the temp up 10C, and you send it. Hey, uh, by the way, in just over one week, all this is going away. We are going to be shaving my head at the Sanjay Mortimer Rep Rap Festival at their auction, which will be hosted by Joel Telling. We're gonna do our best to live stream it on our channel, but I'm sure it's gonna be streamed to E3D's channel, among many others as well. So if you want a chance to get whatever you want shaved into my head, open your wallets and get ready to donate to the Sanjay Mortimer Foundation. It is gonna be an amazing time, and I will have three years of hair growth shaved off. We're gonna donate the hair, to the little princess trust then whatever's left we're gonna buzz it down and the top few donors will be able to shave whatever they want into my head and i will leave it for all the videos that we film on that sunday i hope to meet so many of you at the sanjay mortimer rep rap fest so come out if you can in oxford in the uk on the 2nd and 3rd of december and thank you to printed solid for making that trip possible because uh wow um this would not be possible without them. So I'm, I'm incredibly gracious. Thank you to Printed Solid for doing that. And if you do want to check out some of the cool stuff we did recently at Printed Solid, 
we will card to making filament with them, which was so freaking cool. And, uh, oh man, the color is great. Jesse's Elixir coming soon, TM. Anyways, outro grant time. I would love to know if you guys do use temp towers, and if so, which ones did you use? Now, you can't put links in the comments, so I'm sorry. If it is like a printables link, just remove printables.com and give me the last bit of it, and I will reply to you with the printables link so that everybody else can see it as well. It is important that we share some of this knowledge as the holidays are coming up. In fact, if you're in America, happy belated Thanksgiving, because that would have been yesterday. And realistically, we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the support of all of our gracious channel supporters. Your names are listed right next to me at the $5 tier and higher. Thank you for all of what you guys do in making these videos possible. But if you do want to join, links are down below. And hey, at the $10 tier and higher, you get to come out and hang in our private Discord where uh, we tend to hang out pretty much every night, have a lot of fun, and talk about stuff just like this. That's all I have for you guys today. Stay safe out there. Don't forget to call your loved ones. Click on the videos below because they're pretty awesome. And as always, keep making awesome. Have a good one. Oh no, my hair has been messed up the whole video. I don't care. I'm not going to re-record it. Sorry for my hair looking bad. I didn't realize there was a piece of hair. Don't worry. We're shaving it all soon.